As the only princess of Yongyao Kingdom, she lacks interest in playing qin, chess, calligraphy, and painting, but she only likes to dance with guns and stick. One day, her father asked her curiously, what if you meet your crush and he doesn't love you? She didn't think twice. Stun and lock in the cage, enjoy alone. Everyone was shocked. At that time, she tamed a fierce beast on the mountain and was greedy for its fierce appearance. She brought it back to the palace and ordered a special person to create a cage with gold and jade for breeding. Give it delicious food day and night, but not freedom. Later on, she did not encounter such a man, but instead encountered a lunatic who liked to lock herself in bed with an iron lock. In the secret room, the iron cables clanked and the sound of collisions surged like a tide. He pinched her waist, his eyes crimson, and the possessiveness in his eyes surged wildly. He clung to her ear, nibbling on her neck, his voice hoarse. Sheer, tell me who you really like. Everyone says they are a perfect match. One is the ancestral dragon that unifies the world, and the other is the god of war who wields weapons like a god. Both of them have created myths in their own fields, achieving unprecedented glory. Yes, they are a perfect match. If only she were a general from another country. Unfortunately, he is the emperor of the enemy country. He had broken her pride bit by bit, crushed her pride bit by bit, torn apart all her unruly traits, just to keep her and lock her by his side forever. As a reward, on their wedding night, she stabbed him in the heart with a knife, pushed him off the cliff, smiled brightly, and turned around to leave. Sick and spoiled male lead versus crazy and criticized female lead keywords of the novel. Emperor will kill without pop-ups, Emperor will kill complete collection download, Emperor will kill latest chapter read. Chapter 1 The Former Pete and the Present Prisoner You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 1 The Former Pete and the Present Prisoner The wind is heavy and the snow is heavy. The north wind roars on the desert of Beiyuan, like a wild giant beast, shining in its own territory. A few feet thick blizzard was swept up by the north wind, causing towering snow waves on the ground, blowing a knife like cold current. The dark clouds in the sky were thick and moving slowly, as if they were about to destroy the entire snow mountain. The entire valley was silent, except for the roar of whoosh. The roar of the wind. Da 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 da. The intense sound of horse hooves came, followed by the army. A few dark formations, with colors even darker than the clouds in the sky, suddenly appeared in the pure white world, crushing the entire world to the point of gasping for breath. All the soldiers in the army were wearing thick felt clothes, but even so, each person's eyebrows still had a layer of pure white ice on them. Every time I exhale, the ice on my eyebrows increases a bit. Da 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 da. The sound of horse hooves was tense and intense, echoing throughout the entire valley, as if it were a battlefield of slaughter. Sigh. As the leader's horse stopped and waved, everyone following immediately stopped, with neat and uniform movements, without any unnecessary movements. In an instant, the air was silent, leaving only the sound of snowflakes breathing. The emperor has an order. Within three days, search this valley in a carpet style. The leader tugged at his throat and pulled out a piece of paper with a portrait of a woman painted on it. Show me everything. The search target is a woman with red hair and red pupils, characterized by a fiery red lotus imprint on her back. The imprint has grown like this, and I have carefully examined it all. Every time he exhales, the white color on his eyebrows intensifies. The beauty of that woman's birth, with fiery red hair and crimson eyes, was even brighter than the radiance in the sky. Next to it is a large red lotus. Fragments of red lotus petals are like raging flames, blooming recklessly, proud yet wild. Those who find her will be rewarded. Not only can they receive land, but they can also receive marquises. If you find her, you will receive glory, wealth, and honor. Be careful. The roar echoed through the valley, shaking the snowflakes. As he spoke, a man walked down from the carriage next to him. 
The man had white hair like snow, and his skin was porcelain white, pure and cold, like the finest bone china that had been frozen for thousands of years. If it weren't for wearing a black mink fur cloak and those pair of blood-colored eyes, it would be difficult to recognize them in this snow. In the moment he appeared, the entire valley fell completely silent. Quietly, even the sound of snowflakes falling disappeared. This is the third year. In the third year, the emperor personally led troops to search for people in this far northern region. After the emperor's eastward expedition to recover all his territory, the only reason why he mobilized troops in this way was to find someone. The soldiers below immediately took action upon hearing this, scattering their tools and starting to shovel snow in this generation of regions. From a high place, the ground was a vast expanse of white, and a large number of black armies were moving like small ants on a white cloth. On the edge of a cliff. Two figures walked over. Mother Sheepy, I'm freezing to death. How could there be a living person in such a cold place? One of them breathed a sigh into his hand and rubbed it. They all belong to the warriors of Wooming Kingdom. As we all know, Wooming Kingdom is backed by the far north and is cold all year round. Not to mention the unbearable winter, even in the scorching summer, the streets are incredibly cool, and the people are dressed tightly. But here, they still feel an endless chill. That's right, in the extreme northern region, no living creatures can survive, it's like a barren land. The emperor even sent someone to search for him. The body of that person probably turned into a ghost somewhere long ago. Shit, it's probably gone a long time ago. This broken ground doesn't even have a ghost shadow. Do you know why this place is called the land of ghost destruction? It's too cold, a place where ghosts refuse to come. It's been snowing heavily for years, and for tens of thousands of years, this place hasn't seen the sun. This ice is already hundreds of feet thick. One of them stopped and glanced back, quickly retracting their gaze. It seems that the emperor is not cold, probably because he has entered a ghost realm. The other person immediately silenced him. Shu. Ghost way, ancient secret technique. The current emperor doesn't even know if it's a person or a ghost, and his personality is so gloomy and unpredictable. Be careful not to be heard by him. Who is that woman? I've been looking for her for three years now. Who else can it be? Isn't it that Qin Xiangxi? The red lotus imprint on his back was personally tattooed by the emperor. It is said that the most hidden part deep inside his thigh was also imprinted by the emperor. Such a secretive part. How dare she? Isn't she a national protector? She has already married Yong Yaogua, how could she agree to the emperor touching it? Privately, it is rumored that the emperor's favorite person is her. Before entering the ghost world, the only woman who could stand by his side was Qin Xiangxi. As for the reason behind this, who knows? In summary, it is said that the emperor used to behave recklessly with her, not only daring to sit directly on his dragon chair and play with his jade seal, but also daring to publicly kick and scold him as a bastard. With the emperor's temperament, who dare you say? If it weren't for hearing it with my own ears, I wouldn't have believed there were such people in this world, how could you be so favored? The emperor's violent and surly personality, how could it be? This is amazing. Back then, she lost a war due to a command mistake and was punished by Yong Yaogua, cutting off all her meridians. The emperor found out and led the main force of the 13 battalions to surround Yong Yaogua directly to seek her, just to heal her. The emperor's cold and indifferent nature collapsed directly because of her. When she came, she lived directly in the Palace of Longevity. What place is the Palace of Longevity? Who dares to enter the emperor's sleeping palace? She used to live in the Palace of Longevity, a bed. Who knows? I heard so. But for more than ten years since the emperor ascended the throne, he never accepted concubines or even the palace maids. Countless old courtiers have petitioned the emperor to accept concubines, and even personally selected beautiful women from all over the world to be sent to the palace, just to pass on the dragon throne. 
However, all of them were rejected by the emperor. How could they have had anything to do with her? Who is not good to spoil, and must spoil her? Who knows, in short, she was really favored back then. The emperor put in a lot of effort to make her smile. So now this is a wanted notice posted all over the world. Is it also her who is wanted? Yeah. Hiss. When the emperor invaded the state of Yongyao, he sent people to search every corner of the palace. Three days later, a large fire burned down the Jin Wan Hall. Everyone doesn't know what happened in those three days, but after knowing it, the city was filled with notices. Wanted for death penalty. A thousand gold rewards, and he can even make any demands, as long as he wants to live. It is said that all the red-haired women were caught by him, locked up in the Xianming camp, subjected to severe torture, and investigated whether they were related to her. No living woman came out. All the red-haired women in this world were so scared that they shaved their hair to become nuns, but they were not spared. For a moment, the top of the Xianming camp was covered with human skin. The city was filled with bloody storms, which frightened the capital city. For a moment, the people were too scared to go out and fled one after another in the darkness. Xuanqing wished it could become an empty ghost city overnight. It would be better to kill tens of thousands by mistake than to let go of one, that's the kind of person. What is the Xianming camp? A place specifically for interrogation. A place where ghosts can't escape. A place where survival is impossible and death is impossible. It is said that even if a layer of skin is peeled off, there is still a place where one cannot die. It was not until later that the Prime Minister forced the people to cry on behalf of the people through death, and only then did the farce be resolved. But what exactly happened back then? End of this chapter. Chapter 2 Hiding You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 2 Hiding The two of them walked up to the snowy cliff. There is also a small hill below, which looks like the snow is thicker than it is now, and it is likely to be waist high. However, the two of them are unwilling to move forward. This is a cliff down here. Let's go, let's go. How could there be any living people? Seeing the thick snow, I don't want to go down and see. Maybe I'll just freeze to death. That's right, it's frozen to death. If we continue to take risks, just relying on the Emperor's unpredictable personality, there may not necessarily be glory, wealth, and status. The two turned around as they spoke. If their bodies were to shift further forward, they would truly be prosperous and prosperous for the rest of their lives. Because not far below, there is a cluster of fiery red colors fluttering in the wind. It's a strand of long hair. Belonging to a woman. In the ice cave not far below the cliff, the woman breathed a sigh of relief after hearing these words, lowered her arm from the white tiger beside her, and then leaned against it. The white tiger next to it has a huge and agile physique. When it is tense, the muscles on its limbs are tense, revealing strong muscle blocks. The woman comforted and combed the fur of the tiger beside her, whispering. All right, Xiao Bai, they've all left, don't be nervous. Upon hearing that there were no more footsteps above, she turned around and placed her hand on the ice in front of her. A flame appeared near her palm, and then the ice in front melted, revealing a faint layer of shimmering waves not far away. After the woman walked in, she didn't forget to turn around and push the thick snow next to her, covering the ice cave. The white tiger on the side also kept digging with its claws to help. She smiled gratefully at the white tiger next to her, then walked towards the lake ahead, stepped off her silver fox fur jacket and jumped in. The sky fire red lotus on her back is really eye dot catching, blooming even more recklessly than what is depicted in the painting. She involuntarily reached out and lightly rubbed her thighs, trying to relieve the numbness caused by the extreme cold just now. There is a small scar deep inside the thigh. The edge of the scar is smooth, and it seems that a piece of meat from here was scraped off with some knife, leaving only a shallow scar. If viewed carefully, there is also a seemingly absent red outline on the inside of the scar. 
It is also a heavenly fire red lotus. She was washing her head with fiery red hair in the water, and saw the white tiger next to her still sniffing alertly nearby, propping up its ears to search for the intruder, smiling and reaching out to stroke its fur. All right, it's really okay. Hide here and you won't be discovered. That white tiger finally settled down and held on to her side, letting her rely on it. After washing off all the coldness on her body and gradually feeling warmth, Chen Xiangxi breathed a sigh of relief. Call out. Finally left. For the past three years, I have come twice a year, and the time is uncertain. We keep tracking for three days each time because normal people can only survive here for three days. On the fourth day, the blood will be frozen all over and become ice sculptures. Search for a field every day, and if nothing is discovered, switch to another location the next day. She turned her head to look at the marks on the wall. All of varying shades of scratches, some dyed red. The ones dyed red are the days he came, while the ones pure white are the days he never came. She is looking forward to the day when she meets him in this way. Chen Xiangxi lowered her eyes and looked at her reflection on the water. The world is full of yin and yang mutually reinforcing and restraining each other, and this is also the case here. There is actually a hot spring boiling year dot round deep in the iceberg of this extremely cold place. And there are fish and shrimp, as well as countless exotic algae and vegetables, in the cold spring water near the snow pile on the periphery of this hot spring. For the past three years, she has relied on these fish, shrimp, and seaweed to survive. It's been three years and I don't know what's going on outside Chen Xiangxi flicked her hair and, unsurprisingly, saw that her once fiery red hair had turned back into a crimson purple. This curse can only be suppressed in this extremely cold place. However, even after undergoing a life or death quenching, it still cannot be removed. She raised her arm, and as expected, a black curse mark faintly appeared on it. The curse seal is ferocious and terrifying, with the red color flickering faintly at the edges, making the already complex curse seal look more like a huge red and black poisonous insect. With the appearance of the curse mark, she clearly felt the passing of her abilities. She sighed. This life has less than three years left. Never mind, since I can't get rid of the curse on my body while staying here, it's better to go out and see those old acquaintances. Xiao Bai, do you want to go outside and take a look? She reached out to stroke the fur of the white tiger, combing it down and down. In the past three years, it's time to go out and take a look, end of this chapter. Chapter 3 Was Discovered by Him you are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 3 was discovered by him after a moment, watching his subordinates report to him one by one, the president of Shinji Camp, Yu Feiyu, turned around and walked not far from him, clasping his fists and kneeling on one knee. Report. I have thoroughly searched this area and have not found any trace. Please give me an order. Dot. He lowered his gaze, his crimson eyes devoid of any ripples, completely devoid of any emotion. Suddenly, the person kneeling in the snow was sweating profusely. If he, who used to be a human, was only elusive with a cold and gloomy temperament, then now he is completely unpredictable. He was unpredictable, suspicious and suspicious, which were not the traits he had before. All his changes, touch. He heard the sound of his heart beating. All because of her. This place was already extremely cold, and he knelt down in the snow, feeling even colder. The chill brought by the ice and snow was like a sharp knife, piercing through his bones one after another. In no time, he felt pain in all four limbs. The iron armor on his body seemed to be filled with sharp spikes, piercing his flesh and piercing his bone marrow. The military order was strict, and he dared not move around. He could clearly feel the coldness on his body, gradually increasing, and his whole body was in unbearable pain. Later, he gradually became numb. And even colder than all of this is the aura on his body. The feeling of oppression is extremely strong, and the chill is pressing. He buried his head lower. In no time, he will be frozen into ice lumps. 
Even after years of fighting on the battlefield and being accustomed to the bloody storms, even when facing someone who has been skinned alive in front of me, leaving only a puddle of flesh wriggling, I can still talk and laugh freely. When facing him, I am still scared and shiver all over. I dare not say a talkative word. Upon hearing this, Fong Shiburi raised his eyes and looked at the cliff not far ahead, slowly walking over. Should we go now? After cleaning all the dirt from his body, Chen Xiangxi carefully crouched over and ran to the ice cave just now. Hearing that there was no sound outside, Chen Xiangxi remained calm and composed. After a moment, hearing that there was indeed no movement outside, she reached out her finger and was about to pierce a hole in the wall to see what was happening outside. Unexpectedly, just as her hand reached out, a sharp sword blade suddenly penetrated, rubbing against her ear and piercing her hair. The sudden sound of miso caught her off guard. If this sword were to pierce a little deeper, less than half a thumb's distance, it would be able to destroy her left eye. The sharp blade of the sword brings a fierce cold light, which is even more piercing in the suffocating white snow. If it weren't for a seasoned veteran with a heart that is unmatched by ordinary people, he might have been scared and his legs would have fallen to the ground. Even she, a person who can still drink freely even in the face of a fierce army of tigers and wolves, was frightened and stiffened all over. Then, the sword was taken back. There is a small hole left on the snow wall. She immediately turned to her side and avoided the entrance of the cave, afraid that people outside would see through it. It's pure black, with a dragon-shaped carving on the surface of the blade. How could she not recognize it? How could you not recognize it? Long Quan's sword, his sword. I never leave my hand, even when I sleep, I hang it by the bed. He's out there. In an instant, she felt like she was falling into an ice cave. If caught by him, she will definitely end up in a life less than death situation. She knew exactly how many means he had, especially the method of torturing her. She considered her own way of death, thousands of ways, but none of them were locked in bed and tortured to death by him. Or rather, he wouldn't let her die at all, but instead locked her in, tormenting her little by little until her willpower collapsed and she ended up in a state of mental confusion. Upon hearing that there was no more movement outside, she thought he had left and collapsed, leaning against the ice wall to sit down. Ha! Huh. She breathed a sigh of relief, let go, her palms were already wet. Landing in that place, without wind, unable to blow out, and unable to know where she was. Just as she secretly felt relieved that she had escaped a disaster, something she caught a glimpse of made her nervous again. Hair. Chen Xiangxi's face turned pale with fear, and he dared not let out a moment. He watched helplessly as a strand of purple hair drifted down into a small snow pit not far ahead, fluttering and falling. The broken hair drifted to a place not far from the entrance of the cave, and then floated down, right around the entrance. She shares her hair on both sides of the small hole. If you look in from outside the cave entrance, you can see this strand of hair with just one glance. If he had reached out to get it now, if he hadn't left the cave, he would have been able to see her arm. She looked at her hair, her mind blank with fear. Hair. Damn your hair. What should I do? She stared at the tangled strand of hair, unsure of what to do. With a loud bang, the nearby ice wall was shattered by him, revealing a hole. Not big, but just enough to accommodate his height. Suddenly, a cold wind blew in, and her long hair flew up in the wind. Seeing it about to fly to the cave entrance, she was so scared that she grabbed it and pulled it back, regardless of whether it would tangle together. I must have discovered it. The edge of the cave entrance was only less than an inch away from her, and whenever he took a step in, he would definitely be able to see her. He never does anything uncertain. Moreover, she looked straight ahead. The passage leading into the lake was dug by her own hands, and the walls of the hole were extremely smooth, indicating that it was man.made. She has no hiding place. Crunch. The sound of heavy snow being stepped on came, with a sound. At the entrance of the cave, 
she immediately pressed herself tightly against the snow wall, with such force that she wished to sink herself in. His eyes were fixed on the faint halo emanating from the cave entrance, watching his every move. Afraid that the white tiger could not bear such tension, she had already taken it back to the spirit beast space. Cape of Clothing She saw the hem of her clothes. Black in color, with gold threads embroidered on the edges. The style must be his. One more step. Chen Xiangxi looked at his boots, with only one thought in his mind. One more step. With just one more step, he could see her. At this moment, the coldness on his body had already spread. She was already scared and stiff all over, with cold limbs. Despite being extremely clear-headed, one is unable to control their limbs. She bit her lower lip tightly, forcing herself not to make any noise, saving her long hair and not letting any flaws show. Probably too nervous, my fingertips sank deeply into my palm, and blood slowly flowed along the veins of my palm, dripping onto the snow without any noticing. She felt an inexplicable chill coming from the cave entrance. The pressure brought to her was even stronger than that once claimed to be the most ferocious beast in the world, and even. She felt her legs involuntarily trembling. More terrifying than the scene of the massacre. The fear brought to her by the latter two, even if combined, was not urgent for the terror on his own. Unprecedented momentum. What is entangled with this is a wave of pressure. Cold to the bone, it feels like being stared at by a fierce ghost. My whole body is cold, although my mind is clear, I cannot command my limbs no matter what. My whole body seems to be no longer my own, and I can only watch helplessly as I stand in place and be slaughtered by others. This is the first time in all these years that he has brought her such a feeling. Fear. An unfounded fear. This is a feeling he has never given her before. Qin Xiangxi was so scared that she closed her eyes, gave up struggling, and let herself fall into the darkness. In just the next moment, he could see her. I don't know how long it took, but the expected thing didn't happen. She thought there was a turning point, opened her eyes, and was almost scared out of her wits. He still stands at the entrance of the cave. But for some reason, he stopped. Just standing at the entrance of the cave, I don't know what I'm waiting for. End of this chapter. Chapter 4 Escape You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 4 Escape The cold wind continued to hunt, pouring into the cave, making her shiver all over. The cheers outside made her heart skip a beat even more. Kill A man wearing a mask, holding a large knife, commands. Master has orders, successful assassins will be rewarded with thousands of gold. That mask only covered the upper half of his face. The top has two extremely long and backward curved horns, resembling huge ram horns, and the tail ends in a serrated shape. The entire mask is forged from pure copper, with a layer of antique bronze halo on the surface. Under the pale light refracted by the snow, a faint halo appears at the edges. That voice was really familiar, but after so many years of seclusion, she couldn't immediately remember who it was. Before I could recall it, I only heard a clang and the sound of metal collision. Then with a plop, it was likely that both sides were engaged in battle, and one side's weapon was shaken down and fell onto the snow. She saw flames splattering everywhere, some even splashing in. Next, there was humanity. Escort. Escort quickly. Protect the Emperor. It's right at the entrance. This time, it is the president of the Shinji camp, Yu Feiyu. I believe he was blocking in front of him just now. Immediately afterwards, there was a sound of weapons colliding outside. Your Majesty. It is not advisable to stay here for a long time. Please retreat quickly and enter the center of the Shinji camp. With a splash, Something fell onto the snow, and then with a few gulps, it stopped at the entrance of the cave. Chen Xiangxi looked at it and suddenly felt a tingling sensation on his scalp. A head fell at her feet. The marks on the neck are smooth and even, 
indicating that it was scratched with some sharp object at a glance. If just an ordinary head was chopped off, she wouldn't even close her eyes. After all, he is a seasoned veteran who has long been accustomed to beheading enemies. What made her scalp tingle was that all six acupoints on her head slowly oozed black blood. A pungent fishy smell rushed towards her face, penetrating her internal organs and aggressively attacking her body. Her face turned pale, and her stomach was in turmoil. This is definitely not a regular weapon that cuts off the head. But. She suppressed the discomfort in her heart and forced herself to look at the head. Only to see that the smooth and flat edge was already pitch black. The sound of sizzling and cheering came from her head, and she was frightened after just a glance, afraid to look any further. The blood, which was supposed to be crimson, turned thick and black, slowly seeping out along the edge of the wound, like a thick black ointment. Extremely nauseous, like a puddle of bloody snot. It won't be because the temperature is too cold. She can't even see any ice residue in this blood. He. Thinking about this, she was scared and shivered all over. What was going on? About him although her heart was in turmoil, her brain was still clear. Upon hearing this sound, it seemed that he was no longer at the edge of the opening. Although her limbs were numb from the cold, she still gritted her teeth and struck the ice wall next to the entrance, only to see another passage ahead. She turned her head again to look at the cave entrance, making sure he didn't notice any movement inside. She crouched down and then turned around to completely bury the cave entrance with snow. With a snap of her fingers, a flame appeared on her fingertips. The scene inside the cave is unobstructed. I saw that the surface of the ice cave ahead was smooth and flat, just like when she built it back then, with no signs of imminent collapse. The sound in my ears was the sound of shouting and colliding with metal. She secretly felt grateful that this place was completely frozen, even though there was only a thin layer of ice between it and the outside world, it was enough for her to pass through. She ran forward busily. Seeing some loose snow at the end, with a cool breeze blowing in, she punched it up. Puzzy. With a few sounds, the layer of snow was completely opened by her. Both sides are at war, and neither side is concerned about her. At the foot, there is a corpse. She glanced and came up with a solution. Good opportunity. She dragged his body into the cave entrance, then deftly took off his armor and put it on, looking towards the cave entrance to observe the situation on the battlefield. Chen Xiangxi took the opportunity to slip out of the cave and rushed towards the edge of the battle between the two sides. She watched as a soldier who was a death attendant was stabbed in the chest by a soldier from the Xinji camp and was about to fall off his horse. She didn't care much anymore and immediately pulled the man off his horse, grabbed the reins, and then added a few swords to his chest before flipping over and galloping away. The soldiers from the nearby Shinji camp saw that the armor on her body was from within their own camp and thought it was from their own people. And because I just saw that she was rushing from the direction of the emperor, I thought she had received an urgent order from the emperor to go back and report, so I didn't stop her. The others saw that the people around her had not stopped, thinking that there was an urgent matter to report back, so they did not stop. So, along the way, Chen Xiangxi walked incredibly smoothly without encountering any obstacles. Run. She clamped her legs tightly and commanded the horse under her to accelerate its galloping speed. Run. Now she only has one thought in her mind. Run. Don't think of anything, run away immediately. Until she shook off all the voices behind her, she tightened the reins and jumped off the horse. The speed of the horse is naturally not as fast as hers, but just now on the battlefield, if she ran alone like this, she would definitely be taken back as a deserter. Chen Xiangxi charged forward without looking back. She knows his strength all too well. Swords don't even need to be drawn to determine victory or defeat. On this day underground, it's hard to meet opponents. That group of people are not his match at all. All she needs to do now is escape. All her strength was mobilized, and her long hair returned to its original red color. After a moment. 
The fierce battle has come to an end, with corpses piled up on the ground like mountains. Blood flowing into a river is no longer an exaggeration, bright red flowing on the ground like ribbons. Some have even been frozen into ice before turning black. Report After counting the final amount, Yu Feiyu walked up to him, pushed his sword back, knelt down on one knee, and clasped his fists. Everyone has been resolved, and the opponent's general was rescued by someone who attacked halfway. Due to a sudden attack, he was caught off guard and was forced to flee. Now, the general has sent someone to pursue him. What is the loss like? More than thirty soldiers were lost. Two war horses were killed and one was lost. Just now, someone has been sent to write down their life registered residence and wait until they return to the palace to recover the reward. But among the more than thirty dead soldiers, one body is really weird. He was stripped of his armor and thrown into the snow. He paused before saying. Based on this, I boldly speculate that perhaps Qi Qingguang did not escape, but stripped off the armor of the deceased soldier and hid it among the soldiers. I believe that it is not appropriate to have everyone take off their armor now and take out their identification cards one by one to verify their identity. Dot. Feng Shi nodded and did not answer. He stood in the snow, his red eyes rippling, but he couldn't see any emotions. Suddenly, there was silence in the empty valley. Only the strong wind howled. The army has returned to its original formation, waiting for his orders. The snowy valley suddenly regained its former silence. Even the breathing of snow was never as quiet as before. Pushy. Pushy. A few slight disturbances shattered the tranquility. The two of them looked together and saw a horse charging towards them from afar. Yu Feiyu was greatly surprised. Were there deserters? That's a horse. Looking at the saddle on the horse, he was sure it was his own horse, but he was dumbfounded. Isn't this the horse that got lost? How did you come back again? Wasn't it ridden away by the enemy? Is it difficult for the other party to abandon their horse and flee halfway? According to their style, should we also kill the horses instead of leaving them alive? He reacted for a while but didn't come up with a solution. Foam Shiver looked at the slowly returning horse but smiled. No need. Then, he slowly gave the order. Class teacher returns to court. To escape, one can only go to one place. Okay, that's great. He thought, the killing intent in his heart was like a wave, gradually surging, and his blood eyes gradually darkened. The tide of hatred surged, wishing to tear her apart directly. Qin Xiangxi, I didn't care about you just now, so I let you take the opportunity to slip away. Next time, it won't happen. Late that night. Yeah. A sharp eagle roar came, piercing through the silence of the late night. A huge black shadow flashed past in the thick night and finally settled steadily on the edge of a window. A man is sitting by the window drinking alone. He sat at the intersection of lights and shadows, his figure shrouded in a layer of darkness, unable to see clearly. But I can still feel the luxury on him. Hearing the sound by the window, he put down his cup and lifted his hand to untie the secret message tied to the eagle's leg. Under the clearly extinguished lamp, his fingers were slender and slender, and a layer of bright light appeared on the surface of his fingers, like high dot quality jade carvings. The content of the letter is very short. The emperor personally led an expedition, and a living person was found in the snow plain. In a few words, he revealed the news that the world was about to change. The man curled his lips and smiled. The edge of the porcelain white wine glass shimmered under the moonlight, just like the radiance in his eyes. Ha! <laughs> He turned around, pinched a corner of the letter, and placed the envelope inside the lamp. Watching the letter gradually turn into ashes in the flickering halo, drifting away with the wind, a mysterious smile appeared on his face. This little devil has come back. How much more fun should there be in this world this is the female lead, how could she be so easily caught? Escaped, end of this chapter. 
Chapter 5 Return You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 Return Just as I opened my eyes, what caught my eye was a familiar scene. Zhou Biyuan was taken aback for a moment, then remembered what had just happened. He immediately propped up his body and sat up. The mask on his face had already been taken off and hung on the nearby wall, and all the wounds on his body had been bandaged. Who? Who brought me here? I want to apologize to my master. All right, stop making trouble I'm afraid you won't sleep well, so I sent everyone out specifically. Even if you shout, break your throat, now, no one will come. Mixed with a slight smile, there was no killing intent at all. There is a slight contrast with the rumored image of the number one alliance leader in the martial arts world, who once flipped his hands for the clouds and covered his hands for the rain. The voice was very familiar, and Zhou Biyuan hurriedly turned his head. I saw him sitting on a wooden chair, hands folded on his legs. His facial features may not be exquisite, but they are very profound, especially his eyes, like a bottomless lake. Dark, without a trace of luster. Strictly speaking, she is not a stunning beauty, but due to her graceful demeanor, she can also be called a young master. He had long black hair hanging straight down his waist, without wearing any headgear. Wearing a pure white straight robe, with a plain silk ribbon tied around his waist, and a layer of pure white gauze clothing as thin as cicada wings draped over his shoulders, he had a graceful and ethereal appearance, but due to the faint and fierce aura in his eyebrows, he didn't look as leisurely as he appeared on the surface. He looked at him, his eyes slightly narrowed, and the smile that had been on his face all year round remained on the corner of his mouth, like a cunning old fox. Zhou Biyuan looked at him for a moment, trembling with excitement. Master, master. Master. He quickly got up, stumbled down to the bed, and knelt down on the ground. Master. I am incompetent and failed in my work. I did not successfully cut off the head of Feng Shi's funeral to offer it to you. I am incompetent and cowardly. I have let down my master's daily expectations. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. He propped his hands on the ground, kowtowing like mashed garlic, his voice filled with self-blame. Lu Yuan raised his hand and gestured for him to stand up. Get up now. He looked up at him in disbelief. I saw him sitting upright on the chair, looking down, holding a teacup in one hand and a teacup lid in the other, gently swiping the tea inside the cup with the edge of the lid. After finishing his task, he took a sip of tea and looked up at him with a smile in his eyes. All right, don't blame yourself. It's not your fault for this. Looking at his still self-blaming gaze, seeing him kneeling down and kowtowing again, he reached out and stopped his behavior, sighing. Hey, when you say you're like a god of killing before taking off your mask, but when you take off your mask, you're like a mischievous child. What should I say about you? I was not prepared for you to kill him in this attack. After all, he has entered a ghost realm now, and no one knows how strong his abilities are. How could I let you do something that is uncertain? Lu Yuan stood up and helped him onto the bed, then crossed his hands and placed them on his legs, staring at him with a smile in his eyes. Let's talk about it. What new gains have you gained from this attack? He sat by the bed, lowered his head to recall for a moment, and then asked. Ghost Road, what exactly is it? As soon as he thought of the scene on the snowy plain, a panic appeared on his face. The panic emanating from the bottom of my heart. Why is that feeling so terrifying? He is also a well-known assassin and can definitely be called one of the top three figures in the martial arts rankings. Any enemy placed in front of him is like smoke and clouds in front of him. But when faced with him, fear arose in my heart. The final scene came to mind again. At that time, he held his knife high in mid-air and fiercely chopped towards him. He stood there completely motionless, not even turning his head, not even giving him any leftover light. He was jumping in mid-air, wondering why he didn't hide, when he saw a strange black mist coming towards him. No taste, no sensation, 
he couldn't say exactly what that thing was, but after being entangled, his eyes turned black this scene came to mind again, as he trembled and covered his eyes with his arms, sweating profusely. It's really a feeling of being killed by a vengeful soul unprecedented pressure that kind of fear is definitely not due to the power of coercion, but because this ability is really strange and inexplicable, triggered by the terror in his heart. If it weren't for the quick eyes of the subordinates next to him who snatched him away and ran away, he might have been torn apart by those evil spirits who had been killed by himself. Ghost path is one of the ancient secret techniques. The cultivator has strong abilities and is close to ghosts and gods. However, his cultivation attribute is biased towards Ian, and his heart is usually gloomy. Naturally, he falls into the ghost path and becomes a member of the evil spirits. Some terrifying abilities are natural. What Lu Yuan said is neither urgent nor slow. Watching him turn his head to look over, he paused slightly and placed the teacup on the table next to him. This attack was just to remind him of one thing. He looked at the heavy night outside the window and smiled. Some people haven't had a chance to handle it yet, don't forget about her. Don't shift your focus to the deer chasing league from the desert to the nearest city, it takes two levels to go through. Fortunately, Chen Xiangxi had a token taken from the soldier and ran from the border, which seemed to be urgent. There was not much delay during the entry inspection. As soon as he entered the city, it was getting late and Chen Xiangxi entered the post station under the guidance of the officers and soldiers. Since they were soldiers from the Xuanji camp, it was natural for them to receive them with the highest etiquette. The officers and soldiers immediately served good wine and meat. Then, just after a satisfying meal, Chen Xiangxi immediately put down all the tokens related to the army, wiped his greasy mouth, and took advantage of the gap between the defense and handover outside, immediately flipped through the window and left. How long will it be if he doesn't escape at this time? Chen Xiangxi climbed over the wall and escaped from the post station in a few seconds. Could he wait until he came over to catch her? Sure enough, shortly after she left, the station gate was knocked on again. This time knocking on the door is not like usual, there is no sound of knocking or any secret order, just knocking on the door. So the soldier guarding the door couldn't help but become vigilant and stood at the door, shouting loudly. Who knocked on the door? A low response came from the crack in the door. Protector General Yu Feiyu. With his throat down, he was afraid that there was something urgent that wouldn't make a loud noise. The gatekeeper immediately unlocked the door and saw a figure standing behind Yu Feiyu. At just one glance, the person was frightened and plopped as they knelt down on the ground, watching the person in front of them tremble and say, Your Majesty. Then, immediately kowtow. See your majesty. I only heard you Fei Yu ask. Are there soldiers coming today? The gatekeeper dared not neglect and immediately said. Have you Fei Yu immediately turned around, clasping his fists and bowing his head to the person behind him, waiting for his instructions. Feng Shi's already blood red eyes lit up with blood, and his aura became even colder. In the darkness, he looked more and more like a fierce ghost. But there was no answer. Yu Feiyu knew the answer and turned to continue questioning. Where are you staying? The soldier was trembling and his body was constantly trembling. The inner room. Silence, take the emperor over. The tone is quite stern. The gatekeeper dared not neglect at all and immediately turned around to lead Feng Shiburi and his entourage into the garden. The guest room where Chen Xiangxi lived was on the second floor, and the group walked up the wooden steps, miraculously not making any sound. The gatekeeper walked up to Chen Xiangxi's door in order to invite credit. He was about to open the door when a shiny silver object flashed in front of him. He immediately withdrew his hand and only heard a soft, dong sound. A small knife appeared where his hand had just touched the door. The small knife was only one inch long, like a willow leaf, but its edge was extremely sharp, shining with a cold light. The soldier's face turned pale from fear and he dared not move any further, frozen in place. If he had reported a little later just now, 
he might have lost half of his hand. Yu Fei Yu took a step forward and carefully observed the door, only to see a gap in the door. He turned around and gestured for Feng Shiburi to look at the gap, suppressing his voice and whispering. Your Majesty, look. Feng Shiburi glanced at the gap and did not leave. Yu Fei Yu turned his head to look at the person and said, Open the door. The soldier dared not neglect again. He immediately raised his hand and pushed the door, and then, end of this chapter. Chapter 6 Changes You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 6 Changes Halalalala A basin of water poured down from the top of the door, pouring its head and face. The basin filled with water also fell in response, directly locking the head of the person who had opened the door into the bucket. I probably had anticipated such a scene, but Feng Shiburi quietly stepped back and distanced himself from it, so the basin of water splashed all over the head of the person leading the door. Yu Fei Yu looked at Feng Shi's funeral in surprise, with a divine attitude. He was stunned for a moment, completely unaware of where he had pushed out a basin of water from. Then he thought about the possibility that it was the female demon head in the room, and no one else. It was clear that the female demon head had many tricks, and only the emperor could predict her intentions in this world. The person reacted quickly and immediately took the basin away from his head, then wiped the water off his face and strode to the door, pulling the bedding and roaring angrily. Get up, see the emperor. If it weren't for the emperor personally coming to find someone, just relying on the basin of water just now, I would definitely want him to look good. He was furious, but in the moment he lifted the blanket, he froze. Where are people? He looked at the empty bed and was dumbfounded. People. The bed is clean and without any wrinkles, completely devoid of the appearance of anyone lying down. Fortunately, he was also an extremely experienced person. Upon second thought, he guessed that this guy was either a deserter who had committed a serious crime and escaped to be captured by the emperor. He was not careful and allowed to escape, causing his face to turn pale and pale with fear. The person immediately turned around and knelt down on the ground with a thud, kowtowing like pounding garlic paste. Please, Emperor Mingjian. This matter has nothing to do with me, nothing to do with me. I don't know why he ran away, I really didn't let him go. Yu Fei Yu knew that Feng Shiburi had guessed, but he didn't know his attitude. He turned around and knelt down on one knee in front of him. Your Majesty, this. After all, he ran away in the snow, and if he really seeks to hold him accountable, he cannot evade it. Thinking back on the past three years, Yu Fei Yu felt a cold sweat on his back. It was really terrifying. I'm afraid it's not enough to make him implicated in the nine clans to make amends. Feng Shiburi's gaze remained on the empty bed, with a slight curl in his mouth and an unpredictable smile. Haha <laughs> sure enough demonstrating him, right. Daring him to find her in secret is like this person's fate, right. Just as he was thinking about it, a cold light flashed in his eyes, and his killing intent surged in his heart. I'm not afraid of you running Chin Xiangxi. Meanwhile, on the barren mountains. A black figure shuttled through the forest at such a fast speed that only a series of remnants were left behind. This mountain is rarely inhabited, so the forest is filled with extremely fierce beasts. Fortunately, she made the white tiger transform into a snow.white kitten and lay on her back. With the aura of the spirit beast, the white tiger was enough to scare away all the monsters in the forest. White tiger, one of the four spirits, is almost the most advanced existence among spiritual beasts, naturally able to intimidate this group of things in the forest. She had been walking for a long time, and relying on the reflection of the trees, she inferred that she had been running continuously for two hours without stopping. Then she stopped and helped the trunk to breathe a sigh of relief. It's naturally impossible to take the main road. He must have tried every means to catch her, so how could he take the main road? I have to walk on this small path with barren mountains all around me. The mountains are undulating, and even a search like a closed mountain net would take a month. Chen Xiangxi wiped the sweat off his forehead, 
supported the trunk of a tree, and took a breath. She knew that with his temperament, she knew she had secretly escaped and could not stay overnight at the inn, but still went to take a look, so she deliberately placed a basin of water on the door. Anyway, that basin of water was meant for her to take a shower, but she didn't use it to make her way, and it wasn't dirty either. She laughed to herself as she thought about how he would be slapped upside down on his face by this basin. However, before his smile could fully bloom, she only heard someone shouting in front of her. Help! 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 Her face stiffened, and as she followed the voice, she looked up and saw that there seemed to be flames coming from a distance. Accompanied by shouting, there was a strong smell of blood. Moreover, the sound was getting louder and it was obvious that it was charging towards me. Chen Xiangxi's pupils twitched as he watched the light getting closer and closer to him. Killed. The girl running at the front is a girl. In the dark of the night, she couldn't see her exact appearance clearly. She could only see clearly that she was wearing a silk long dress, with silver steps on her head, and her skin was delicate. She should be some young lady. Behind them were several female maids running together, followed by a person with a fierce face and wielding a machete. Chen Xiangxi knew it in his heart. I think we encountered a robber she turned her head and let the white tiger on her shoulder hide in the spirit beast space. She was about to find a place to hide, but she didn't expect the girl to have sharp eyes and see her at a glance. Then she screamed and rushed towards her. Unfortunately, I didn't see the road under my feet clearly, tripped over a stone, and fell on my back to the ground. Not far from Chen Xiangxi. Chen Xiangxi was about to step back, but she grabbed her ankle. I saw her looking up at her, her voice trembling. Help! Help! The makeup on my face has been washed away by tears, and my forehead is bleeding, giving me a pitiful and miserable look. Getting closer, Chen Xiangxi finally saw the bloodstains on her body clearly. Probably stained with the blood of guards or robbers. Otherwise she wouldn't have run so fast. The strong smell of blood just now probably came from her. The group of robbers behind were obviously not vegetarians either. Seeing Chen Xiangxi alone, they knew that she must have some ability, otherwise it would not be possible to go so deep into this forest. So they stopped attacking and scattered around, forming a half circle, surrounding them and the group of maids. Chen Xiangxi hugged her arm and gazed at her from a high position. If you don't die, what do you care about me? The voice was floating, completely like a spectator. Token as evidence, I am Xiao Yun, the young lady of the Xiao family in the capital. Please save me quickly. Chen Xiangxi lowered his eyes and looked at the token. Pure gold, inlaid with jade, with the word, Xiao, engraved on the surface. As is well known, major families like to make tokens with their family name engraved on them and worn around their waist to indicate their identity. Those who can hold tokens must have a direct bloodline, otherwise they will be beheaded. Wuming Kingdom has always had a strict hierarchy, so this thing will not be fake. The Xiao Family Chen Xiangxi let out a cold snort in his heart. That is indeed a big family. Especially this generation. The head of the family is a high dot ranking official in the court, while the mother is the only daughter of the famous merchant family in Wuming Kingdom. But none of this has anything to do with her. Chen Xiangxi raised his eyebrows. Why should I save you? Xiao Yun shouted. Encountering the imperial family in the capital and refusing to save them in the face of death is a capital offense. With a burst of laughter, Chen Xiangxi burst out. Sister, you're really joking. If you don't save me from death, it's a capital offense. That's the rule set by your government. If the government doesn't know I'm not saved from death, how could they accuse me of offending you? Xiao Yun was clearly stopped by the question. She was momentarily stunned and then reacted. How could the government not know that you refuse to save yourself in the face of death? People are doing it, the sky is watching, and the government will eventually know. Chen Xiangxi only found it funny and hugged her arm, 
looking down at her with a smile, do you think you will survive tonight? Dot. Xiao Yun was stunned for a moment, then her face turned pale. She must have known the answer. Chen Xiangxi continued. Since you cannot survive, I believe the group of maids around you will also not be able to survive. In that case, your group of ghosts under the knife will naturally not report to the government, and this group of people who killed your robber would have wished that this matter was not known and would not have reported to the government, otherwise they would have fallen into the trap. Xiao Yun's face stiffened, and there was no longer the arrogant atmosphere on her face. End of this chapter Chapter 7 Exchange You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 7 Exchange Chen Xiangxi smiled and spread his hand. So tell me, maybe even the government didn't know you were dead, how could they investigate this case, and then Shun Ting found out that I stood idly by. Xiao Yun looked up and kicked her fiercely. My dad has always doted on me. If he knew I was missing, he would definitely rummage through the entire mountain and look for me. If he finds my body, he will definitely order the government to investigate thoroughly, and then my dad will definitely not let you go. Chen Xiangxi was completely amused by her. Sister, you are really interesting. Even if your father ordered someone to investigate and luckily caught this group of robbers, how can you ensure that these robbers can describe me clearly and let the government know who you are looking for? Xiao Yun's expression froze on her face again. Dot. Chen Xiang she said, looking up at the robber who was already staring blankly ahead. Do you know who I am? The group of robbers were taken aback and then shook their heads one after another. Chen Xiangxi continued to look at the people on the ground and smiled. You see, they don't even know where my identity and appearance come from, so the government naturally can't find me. Since that's the case, why should I save you? Xiao Yun was so angry with her bandit logic that she trembled all over. Her body probably stopped hurting from excitement and suddenly jumped up from the ground, pulling at her collar, kicking her and gritting her teeth. You, 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 you refuse to save yourself in the face of death, you're a bastard. You bastard. Your whole family is a bastard. Chen Xiangxi raised his hand and grasped the acupoint on her wrist, forcing her to let go, but was slapped open by her backhand. Chen Xiangxi was not angry and laughed in his heart. TSK TSK TSK, what a charming young lady. If it were her previous self, she would probably have torn her mouth apart just by going up. Chen Xiangxi stared at her and said seriously. Can you tell me, if you don't take the good road, why do you have to take the small road? Since your father dotes on you like this, I believe you must have taken the small road and equipped you with many guards. What about them? Xiao Yun's face stiffened, then she lowered her head and her voice noticeably decreased. No, my dad doesn't know I'm taking the small path. He instructed me to take the big road, but I insisted on taking the small path. Chen Xiangxi sneered, oh, it's exciting and fun. She took a step back as she spoke, flicked the collar she had just dirted, and stared at her. Yeah, since I knew I was a young lady in a piece of fat in the eyes of the robbers, and still insisted on taking a small path, wasn't it obvious that I was being chased? Upon hearing this, Xiao Yun gritted her teeth and stared at her as she regained her previous look of gritting her teeth. Stop talking nonsense, can you save me or not? Chen Xiangxi turned around, waved his hand, and walked around Xiao Yun with great strides. No, I'm still in a hurry and won't waste any more time with you. She is not a kind-hearted woman who believes in children, so why bother meddling? The robbers looked at her and obediently made a way for her. Chen Xiangxi passed through the diameter without even stopping. If saved, it is inevitable to be related to this family, and if he detects it Chen Xiangxi thought and continued to move forward. Unable to walk far, I only heard a cry coming from behind. Ah, stop it. Next, there was the sound of the cloth strip being torn apart. It should be obvious that there is an opinion on the next matter. The girl's voice from behind became increasingly sharp. Chen Xiangxi's whole body stiffened, 
and a hint of complex emotions flashed through his crimson-purple eyes. Then, he sighed like an appointment, turned around, and walked back. He picked a sharp stone from the ground and hit the head of the person who had already pressed the woman under him. The person suddenly covered his head, turned his head to look at the source of the stone, and cursed loudly. Ah, who is it? Damn it, it hurts me so much. I saw the girl who had just left walk back again, standing there holding her arm and staring at her from a high position. I changed my mind. She said coldly. If you leave now, we can still spare your lives. The robber clearly did not expect Qin Xiangxi to have such an attitude and spat at her. Pooh. The attitude is obvious. Qin Xiangxi hugged her arm and slowly stepped forward, helplessly saying. Really, I didn't want to kill anything at first, but I gave you a chance. If you don't cherish it, then don't blame me. She spoke with a murderous intent in her eyes, reaching out to grab the knife of the nearest robber and snatching it away. On the other hand, the robber's head rolled down. Blood splattered everywhere. The scattered blood splattered on Qin Xiangxi's face, highlighting her already porcelain white face, which was even more enchanting in the dark night. Like a demon walking out of the darkness. The robbers surrounding her suddenly dispersed, holding knives and aiming their blades at her. Their eyes changed one by one. This woman's reach is extremely terrifying. The speed was fast just now, and they didn't even see clearly what happened. Quick, ruthless, accurate. This is Chen Xiangxi's style. Xiao Yun was stunned, her arms propped up on the ground, staring blankly at the person in front of her, dumbfounded. Even the head of the robber rolled onto her hand and then rolled over, without any reaction. My face was splattered with blood and I forgot to wipe it. The robbers changed their faces one by one, and their expressions staring at Qin Xiangxi naturally changed a lot. They surrounded her and then approached her cautiously. Qin Xiangxi knew it was a probe and wanted to besiege her. She wiped the blood off her face indifferently, picked up the knife from the corpse's hand on the ground, looked up at the person in front of her, pursed her lips and smiled, then rushed forward and chopped towards their heads. The bloody smell stimulated her mind to heat up, and the scene before her turned red, with blood all over her head. Those robbers are all difficult to deal with, but where is Qin Xiangxi's opponent? Suddenly, waves of mournful cries came from the woods. The moonlight of that night was particularly bright, but still couldn't compare to the moon in the forest that seemed to have fallen from the human world. After a moment, finally resolving everyone, Qin Xiangxi stood in a pool of blood, looking down at the broken arms and limbs on the ground, taking a deep breath. Turning her head to look at Xiao Yun behind her, she took a few steps forward and was about to speak, but her expression suddenly changed, and then she trembled and retreated back. Ah! Killed ah! Killed ah! Ah! The pupils suddenly contracted, giving off a ghostly appearance. But because his arms were so scared that they became weak, he couldn't move back any further. I must have scared her. Qin Xiangxi sighed and squatted down in front of her, staring into her eyes. Don't make any noise. But it was a heart-wrenching scream. Ah, I killed someone. I killed someone. I killed someone. The shock made her ears ache. Qin Xiangxi rubbed his eyebrows helplessly and said. Don't make any noise. Another heart-wrenching scream. Killed, 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 killed. This time, her head really hurts. Finally losing all patience, Chen Xiangxi turned his head and looked around. He grabbed a head and threw it at her, shouting. Shut up. They all said, don't make noise. Can't you understand people's language? The voice is louder than Xiao Yingdong's recent calls. The girl in front of me was suddenly scared and dumbfounded, staring at her in a daze, never daring to say a word again. Qin Xiangxi just got up and was about to continue on his journey while finding a pool to wash the blood off his body when he saw two maids walking behind him. They are all women, looking as big as Xiao Yun, 
and it seems that they have a very good relationship with Xiao Yun on a daily basis from inexpensive jewelry. Otherwise, there wouldn't be so much money or valuable jewelry. I saw two people supporting each other as they walked, one of whom seemed to have a sprained ankle and had some difficulty walking. Their skirts were covered in blood, so they barely escaped. Chen Xiangxi's heart thumped for a moment. These two people seem so pitiful, but in fact, they are not of the same kind. End of this chapter. Chapter 8 If you are not angry, you are already there. If you are angry, you will see blood. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 8 If you are not angry, you are already there. If you are angry, you will see blood it's strange. If we were to talk about robbery, these servants should have died the first thing as a slave not only gives him an extra mouth to eat, but also prevents him from defecting and reporting. If he were to be resold as a slave, these interception incidents would inevitably be spread, and they could not be sold or used as maids. Naturally, they would be the first to be dealt with. Because it has no value. Qin Xiangxi's eyes only darkened, but he didn't say much. One of them reached out to her and said, This sister is so strong, do you have any followers around her? Where are you going? If you're walking alone, why don't you get on the car and walk this mountain road together? It's better to save some energy and have someone to take care of along the way. Chen Xiangxi lowered his eyes and looked at her hand, without directly refusing. Indeed, after such a long journey, I feel a bit tired. Since the person has been saved, there will definitely be contact in the future. The capital is just a small area, looking down but not looking up. Now refuse what you will see again in the future. If we let them repay this favor now, we won't have to argue and explain it clearly in the future. Moreover, this young lady appears to be a pampered and spoiled master. She must have carried a lot of food with her, and after such a long journey, her stomach is also a bit hungry. It would be better if she had some food to rest. Glancing at Xiao Yun beside her, she hugged her arm and didn't respond. It was likely that she couldn't pull down her identity to invite her, but there was no intention of refusing. Chen Xiangxi thought about it and agreed. Following the two of them towards the front, they soon saw the carriage. Sitting on the ground next to them was a tied coachman with a piece of rag stuck in his mouth. When he saw them approaching, his pupils suddenly shrank and he let out a loud cry. There are signs of being chopped off on the car, surrounded by corpses of guards. Chen Xiangxi watched as the maid ran forward to tear open the rag in the driver's mouth and untie him, without answering. Assisted by a maid, the two of them sat firmly in the carriage. The coachman immediately swung his whip and drove the horse forward. Chen Xiangxi turned his head to examine the interior decoration of the carriage. This carriage is quite luxurious. What the material is, it's already dark and hard to tell, but just by hanging round hollow pure silver ornaments on all four corners with night bright beads inside, each one can emit nine rays of light, illuminating the carriage like daylight, it's clear that this carriage is not a common object. Even Qin Xiangxi, who came from the royal family, couldn't help but feel a secret shock in his heart. Then, a hint of regret flashed through her heart. However, leaving the grand road untouched and insisting on walking on such a deserted and impassable mountain road, bumping back and forth, is really an injustice to this car. She thought, her gaze fixed on Xiao Yun's face sitting across from her. Obviously, the girl also felt her gaze, raised her gaze to her, snorted, hugged her arm, and turned her face away. Don't worry, I won't thank you. As she spoke, she added. Just thinking about your attitude of saving people just now, miss I get angry. I won't thank you. Chen Xiangxi couldn't help but curl her lips. I don't mind either, you really dislike me. If it weren't for your request, I wouldn't have let you get in my car. Then she said again. You're just as annoying as Qin Xiangxi. This is amazing, it's really the first time I've heard someone complain about hating me in person. Qin Xiangxi raised her eyebrows. Qin Xiangxi. 
Perhaps this name touched Xiao Yun's scales, and she suddenly stood up from her seat, clenching her fists and waving her hands, with a look of deep dot seated hatred. Isn't that right? It's Chen Xiangxi, the god of war of Yong Yaoguo. As she spoke, she pointed at her nose with a fierce expression. You're just as annoying as her. Chen Xiangxi couldn't help but look up a few more times at the person in front of her as she listened with a hint of interest. She has offended many people in this world, and there are also many who want her life. Enough to occupy most of the names in the life and death book of the Yen Prince. However, it should not include the person in front of us. The Xiao family is well dot known in the capital, and she naturally heard of it. But insisting on meeting only happens once. That was at the Hundred Flowers Banquet, where the reputation of the flower leader should have belonged to Xiao Yun, but she intercepted and took it halfway. It is said that after going back, she cried for a long time, even her eyes were swollen from crying. But how many years ago did this happen? It's just a trivial matter, shouldn't I have been thinking about it for so long? Upon hearing this, Chen Xiangxi propped up his head and asked. How did she make you so disgusted? Although this young lady has a bad temper, her upbringing is not bad, and she no longer has the habit of being spoken ill of behind her back. She just hugged her arm and turned her head to say, humph, then there was no further conversation. Chen Xiangxi secretly smiled and did not ask further questions. For a moment, the carriage quieted down again. This girl, so panicked at the bloody scene, yet still quiet in such a short time, is not very human. Chen Xiangxi was feeling a little suspicious when he suddenly remembered that the grandfather of the Xiao family was also a collateral branch of the Lord of Xue City. Xue City was one of the four major cities of Wuming State, with tens of thousands of soldiers and horses, brave and skilled in battle, and had made remarkable military achievements. After her death, she was posthumously honored by the emperor. It was only in her father's generation that she began to serve as a civil servant in the court, but she was also known for her ability to be both civil and military. Therefore, she felt relieved. This temperament should have been accustomed to being wild since childhood. I believe I have seen this scene before, but it was just a long time since I last saw it, and I suddenly felt a little panicked. Thinking about this, she didn't think much. She was really tired from rushing on just now, so she closed her eyes and took a nap. The lady across from me is probably a bit tired, and surprisingly, she also quieted down at the same time. After an unknown amount of time, the car stopped. Chen Xiangxi opened his eyes slightly, with no signs of fatigue in them. It was already clear and bright. But in the moment he saw the maid, he immediately closed his eyes and continued to pretend to sleep. I only heard the maid say. Mississippi. Xiao Yun responded. What's up? On the road, the maid met a pillar of strange grass, which looked like the crimson orchid fairy that the master had been talking about, but couldn't be sure if it was true. If you get off the car, help the maid identify it. Chen Xiangxi chuckled to himself while listening. If an ordinary maid had seen what she had seen just now, she would have been scared and hurried on. How could she have thought of identifying these flowers and plants? However, he is not a very foolish person. I can tell she's not an easy person to fool, so I'll just fool Xiao Yun, right? Perhaps after what happened just now, her trust in these two people deepened a bit. Xiao Yunxi had no doubt and immediately agreed. Chen Xiangxi still hugged her arms and closed her eyes, but after Xiao Yun got off the car, she quietly looked out through the gaps in the car's curtains. As expected. She knew to herself that the so dot called herbs were fake and the harmful ones were real. Watching the maid lead Xiao Yun towards the bottom of a big tree, pointing at a pillar of wild grass and explaining to her in a dignified manner, she secretly led her towards the edge of the cliff. Chen Xiangxi was too lazy to talk to her, so she got off the car and strode to the driver's side. She lifted his collar and lifted him up, pulling him to the edge of the cliff. The coachman was startled and struggled desperately, but where was Chen Xiangxi's opponent again? I saw him desperately retreat, not wanting to be dragged away by her, 
but he couldn't resist her strength and followed her step by step, his face contorted into a pig liver color by his collar. Two bulging eyeballs, revealing fear. The soft soil beneath my feet also pulled out two deep marks. The two maids were also frightened by the situation and naturally dared not act recklessly anymore. They both stared at Qin Xiangxi, their faces frightened. Finally, Qin Xiangxi walked to the edge of the cliff and forcefully pulled the coachman towards the cliff, only to see that half of the coachman's body had already swung out of the cliff. This posture was truly thrilling. The driver's upper body was completely outside the cliff, and his lower body was barely touching the edge of the cliff with his toes. The only thing that could ensure he wouldn't fall now was Qin Xiangxi's hand holding his collar. Once she let go, he would fall directly. Qin Xiangxi stared at the person in front of him and only heard him say, You, 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 what are you doing? His face was frightened and he couldn't even speak clearly. Qin Xiangxi remained indifferent. Do what you wanted to do earlier but didn't have time to do it. The coachman's face stiffened, but in an instant he turned innocent. What did I want to do but didn't have time to do it? Chen Xiangxi still said. You know it in your own heart. The coachman stuttered. I was just trying to save Miss, but unfortunately, I was. But in the moment of seeing a cold smile at the corner of Chen Xiangxi's mouth, his voice suddenly stopped. I saw Qin Xiangxi staring at him and saying word by word. I haven't said anything yet, why did you mention this matter? Then, she added. You know better in your own heart than I do. The coachman became anxious, turned his head to look at the cliff and then looked back at Qin Xiangxi, cursing loudly. I tell you, this cliff is so low that you can't fall to death. If I were to get down and still live, I would definitely find someone to do you. Qin Xiangxi drew a small knife from his waist and held it in his hand. Even when he's on the brink of death, he can still maintain his composure and be considered a character. Then, a cold light flashed across the coachman's wrist. Ah! Accompanied by a mournful scream, blood gushed from the driver's wrist. He trembled as he lifted his arm, looking incredulously at half of his remaining arm. His hand, gone. Blood gushed out from his wound and fell onto the cliff below. Immediately after, screams of agony echoed in his ears, and the coachman's body twitched violently, trying to break free from Qin Xiangxi's shackles, but she pulled him even tighter. The blood at the wound flowed faster due to his vigorous movements. Qin Xiangxi was still just watching, with no fluctuation in his expression. Soon, the roar of wild beasts came from below, probably all attracted by this blood. The coachman turned his head and glanced at the wild beasts gathered under the cliff, roaring at him with his head tilted back, his face frightened. I only heard a calm voice coming. It's almost enough. It's Chen Xiangxi. The driver's pupils contracted suddenly. Her true purpose was not to throw him to death, but to throw him off the cliff and be bitten alive by wild beasts. Then, just as he watched her react, Chen Xiangxi let go. With a thud, the sound of objects falling came from below the cliff. Immediately after, there was the deep cheers of the wild beasts, accompanied by bursts of screams. Presumably those bloodthirsty creatures had already started their own delicious meal. Qin Xiangxi stood by the edge of the cliff listening, until the sound coming from below gradually weakened and the cheers of the beasts also decreased. Chen Xiangxi then turned around. There should be no more survivors. She turned around and walked up to the three people who were already staring blankly, then stopped. You, you, you. What are you doing? The first person to react was Xiao Yun. The other two maids were scared and squeezed together by Chen Xiangxi, looking at her in terror. Chen Xiangxi withdrew his knife, his voice still calm and indifferent. As you can see, killing. Obviously, Xiao Yun had not yet reacted and stared at her in a daze for a long time. Then, a heart-wrenching scream echoed through the night. What are you doing? Don't come over here. Qin Xiangxi took two steps back and distanced himself from her, only then did he feel the pain in his ears slightly ease. 
With the lesson learned earlier, this time Chen Xiangxi picked up a stone and threw it at her directly. Don't shout, it's really noisy. Sure enough, Xiao Yun quieted down again. But still with a pale face, staring at her with a fearful expression. Chen Xiangxi knew that saying anything to her at this moment would have no effect, so he turned his head to look at the two maids. If I hadn't acted earlier, it would have been you who died, Miss Xiao. As she spoke, she slowly walked towards those two people. If I'm not mistaken, actually this is not what you call a herb, and you haven't seen this herb, have you? Just now, you said you saw the herb and wanted her to get off the car to identify it, but you wanted to take the opportunity to stop the car and kill her, right? Actually, you're with that group of mountain bandits, right? Sentence by sentence, the voice was slow but carried an unquestionable dignity. As expected, a hint of fear flashed in the eyes of the two maids. Seeing that he guessed right, Chen Xiangxi turned around and looked at the person behind him. Miss Xiao, you said you decided to walk the path in the forest because you thought it was fun and interesting. Are you actually lying, right? Actually, this is not your intention at all. It's just that one or both of these maids are encouraging you to walk through these mountains and forests, and that's why you decided to go, right? Xiao Yun had not yet reacted from her fear, but Chen Xiangxi had an answer in her heart after glancing at the frightened eyes of the two maids. Sure enough, she smiled, very cold. How do you know they just wanted to frame me? It's Xiao Yun's voice. Perhaps I have come to my senses. Without hesitation, Chen Xiangxi said. These three are all servants of the Xiao family. If you encounter a servant, of course you will be killed first. Xiao Yun didn't quite understand. Why? Chen Xiangxi looked sideways at the later generations and gave a brief explanation. Keep you, and you can negotiate with the Xiao family to get money. Keep them, and be wary of retaliatory attacks. Xiao Yun was not stupid either, and a sudden expression appeared on her face. Chen Xiangxi continued to look at the two people in front of him. At the first sight of you, I was so strange. This young lady appeared to be a pampered master in her daily life. How could she choose to walk in such mountains and forests? Moreover, if the master at home disagrees, how dare this servant keep it hidden? As she spoke, she walked around to the back of the two maidservants and kicked towards their knee depressions. With a thud, both of them knelt down on the ground, looked up in fear at the person in front of them. Chen Xiangxi walked around to the two of them and looked down at them. I don't like people who can't see the situation clearly, they are very foolish. Then, she bent down and looked at the two people level, lowering her voice. Do you know why the coachman died? The threat penetrated my ears. One of the maidservants was already trembling and speechless in fear, while the other was slightly clever. Although her face was also pale in fear, she immediately replied. Miss Hui, the coachman went to the edge of a cliff while using the restroom and accidentally fell, causing a wild beast to bite and die. Chen Xiangxi straightened up and looked down at the two, smiling. Great, I like smart people. End of this chapter. Chapter 9 What exactly happened back then? You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 9 what exactly happened back then speaking, Chen Xiangxi turned around and walked first towards the carriage. Let's go. Xiao Yun ran to follow her and whispered, pointing to the two people behind her. So what about them? Do they use death? Chen Xiangxi paid no attention. If they die, who will be responsible for driving? Who will do the rough and heavy work? As she spoke, she lifted the curtain and let Xiao Yun board the car first. Maid, it's just a dog. As long as you listen, you can stay. So the carriage resumed its journey. Xiao Yun seemed to finally realize the unfathomable depth of the person in front of her, but she had no intention of harming herself, and her hostility towards her decreased slightly. But ultimately, she couldn't bear to apologize. 
Xiao Yun just pushed several pastry boxes she had eaten alone in front of Qin Xiangxi. Qin Xiangxi opened his eyes and glanced at the box in front of him, then at Xiao Yun. She saw herself looking over, blushing with embarrassment, and immediately sat back as if hinting at her unwillingness. Chen Xiangxi chuckled and closed her eyes again. A small matter is not worth considering. After what happened just now, the two maids were indeed much quieter. Chen Xiangxi knew that these two people had no courage and were only interested in wealth. He was frightened and didn't say anything more. After a while, the carriage stopped. Chen Xiangxi opened her eyes, with a hint of impatience flashing in her eyes. What she hates the most is being interrupted while resting. I only heard someone shouting loudly ahead. Who is ahead? She frowned and before she could speak, the person in front of her excitedly pulled open the curtain and ran off the carriage. Yes, is that Xiao Wei? Chen Xiangxi's body paused, and he pulled the small knife that was already in his palm back to his waist. He lifted a gap in the curtain and frowned while looking out. Do they know each other? The leader held a torch high, wore a belt and sword, wore a dark red robe, and had a large Xiao tattoo on his chest. Probably a confidant of the Xiao family. I saw Xiao Yun stretch out her arms around the leader's neck and burst into tears. Probably because I had been feeling depressed and wronged for a long time along the way just now, and had long wanted to cry. However, due to the inconvenience of an outsider sitting across from me, I could only endure it. Upon hearing this, Chen Xiangxi's eyes flashed with a hint of approval. Her temperament was delicate, but she did indeed have a hint of a lady from a wealthy family on her body. Not easily shedding tears to show weakness in front of outsiders, no matter how much injustice one suffers, still maintaining the dignity of a young lady. As Xiao Yun pointed to the two maids who had already been escorted next to her, wiping tears and tearing at the collars of those around her, Chen Xiangxi knew that she must be talking about the whole story. She thought that if she left now, there would be no problem, but they would truthfully tell the truth when they reported to the authorities. At that time, there would be no hiding place in his ears, so Chen Xiangxi got off the car. The leader saw Chen Xiangxi walking over, patted the back of the person in his arms, and then turned to look at Chen Xiangxi, clasping his fists and saying. Miss has already told Han about the incident just now. Regarding her life. Saving kindness, Han will never forget it, and the entire Xiao family will never forget it. Chen Xiangxi simply said calmly, it's okay. The girl's hand is so powerful, but who is the hidden world master? Chen Xiangxi responded. Just read more books and understand better. I'm not a master of the hidden world. I'm not talented, just a mediocre commoner. Please don't worry about it. Still looking indifferent, as if I hadn't done anything just now. The person responded with a clenched fist. The kindness of saving lives should be repaid by the gushing spring. If the young lady doesn't mind or get on the car together, Han is willing to escort her all the way to the capital. Chen Xiangxi looked at the carriage behind him. Dot. In order to avoid any involvement with this wealthy family in the capital and prevent them from being recognized in the future, Chen Xiangxi was about to refuse. However, when he thought of such a wealthy family, he would definitely not owe a stranger any favors. Now that they were not allowed to repay him, he became even more entangled. He sighed and agreed. The carriage jolted up the road again, but fortunately it was not far from the nearest road and soon entered a flat road. Chen Xiangxi listened to the person arranging everything outside and explained a few more words before entering the car. He couldn't help but look up at the person in front of him. If it were just a family guard, there might not be any qualifications to enter the car. Being able to enter like this, even sitting next to the young lady, may be someone from the direct bloodline of the Xiao family. But they are not the same surname. In terms of seniority, they should belong to Uncle Xiao Yun and his entourage. Just as she was thinking about it, she remembered the look of Xiao Yun hugging his neck just now. She couldn't help but lift her eyes and look at the person in front of her, just right in the eye he was looking at. Just listen to him say. 
Miss, if time is not tight and you don't want to sit at the Shao family, I think the master will treat Miss as a guest of honor and treat her well. Chen Xiangxi spoke up and refused. No, I'm going to Beijing to find someone. I'm in a hurry, so I won't go to the mansion to rest. Then she continued. If you want to repay this favor, just conceal my identity when reporting to the government. As for how to tell the lie, you will handle it yourself. Han Chang's expression suddenly stiffened on his face. This statement can be said to be insightful. Firstly, she expressed that she didn't have time to refuse, and then she said that as long as she followed her requirements, she had already changed the favor, and in the future, they would not owe each other any debt, and their relationship would be kept clean. Moreover, further down the line, it means that they have already owed her a favor. If they want to repay this favor, they must keep it confidential and not let her report it to the government. In other words, if you want them to report to the government, it means that the Xiao family has betrayed their trust. It's like a bandit's request. Han couldn't help but swallow his saliva and stared blankly at the person in front of him. This is the only person besides the master and those shrewd merchants who is so eloquent. So, Han Qing couldn't help but stutter when he spoke. Does this young lady want to meet anyone when she comes to Beijing? The Xiao family is not considered a prestigious family, but they are also not small. Various forces in the capital can speak up. If the young lady doesn't mind, if Han asks the master for a letter of introduction, it will also facilitate the young lady's affairs. Chen Xiangxi glanced at him. Of course, one cannot name Bian Yusin. If he knows she's looking for him, then he knows she's related to the Wujin League. If he were to report to the government, it might be that Bian Yusin is doomed. No need, I have my own arrangements. You can send me outside the city and let me go down on my own. When you report to the government, just watch and handle it yourself. As she spoke, she asked in response. I think the value of Miss Zhao's life should not be such that she cannot even accomplish these two things, right? Han Cheng exclaimed in his heart that his aunt Ku was so eloquent that he couldn't speak at all. The direction of his speech was completely following her. This problem is like closing the box and then directly locking it. Facing her gaze, Han Cheng hurriedly said. No, no, we Miss Xiao from the Xiao family are priceless and priceless. How could we not even be able to do this small matter? Chen Xiangxi just nodded. That's good, please remember our agreement. As she spoke, she added another sentence. Every time before you speak, please think carefully about the value of the person sitting next to you, and whether it is worth it or not. Let your Xiao family talk nonsense, they can't even handle small things. After hearing this, Han Cheng felt even more distressed. It was like locking the box and putting it in a pit, and then burying it with soil. There is absolutely no room for maneuver. This girl, her mind is really terrifying. Chen Xiangxi nodded in satisfaction. Unexpectedly, Han Xiu suddenly changed the topic. The gates in the capital have been very strict recently. If the lady doesn't tell Han who his surname and name are, it may be difficult for him to explain. Chen Xiangxi turned his head and frowned. How strict is it? Han Xiu answered. Miss, you may not know that since the Peerless War, the Emperor has set fire to the Golden Luan Palace and Fengqi Palace, ordering the arrest of all the red-haired women in this world. Once caught, they will be immediately thrown into the Xianming camp and subjected to severe torture. No one is allowed to cover up or hide, otherwise they will all be stripped of their skin. For a moment, everyone in the entire court was naturally reporting to each other, and no one dared to conceal it. Even the carriages entering the city had to be rigorously searched. As soon as the words finished, Xiao Yun took over the conversation. Yeah, right, if you go out of the city and take a look, you'll see it. It's really a human skin flag. Each human skin belongs to a girl with red hair. There aren't many women with red hair, I'm afraid he'll kill them all. As she spoke to herself, she said. I don't know what exactly happened back then, causing the emperor to be so angry. 
Then, she pouted with a hint of resentment. It's also the first time I've seen the emperor so angry, I must have betrayed him. That Chen Xiangxi is really not a good thing. Upon hearing this, Chen Xiangxi's eyes darkened, but he did not speak. One day later. Chen Xiangxi got off the carriage in the wilderness outside the city gate and decided to enter the city himself. Han Cheng naturally dared not say much and immediately let her down. The carriage grew farther and farther, and as she watched the figure gradually disappearing from view, Xiaoyun felt a little curious. Uncle, her skills are so strong. How come I never knew that there was such a person in Wujin League? But no one responded. She turned her head curiously and saw Han Cheng's face pale, with cold sweat oozing from his forehead. With a look of fear, Xiao Yun was somewhat curious and waved her hand in front of him a few times. Uncle. Han Cheng's pupils suddenly shrank, and his hands involuntarily trembled. His pupils slowly moved towards Xiao Yun and suddenly shouted. Report to the official, you must report to the official. He roared out. Later today, you will follow me to the royal guard's place and fully understand the whole story. You must explain it in detail, especially about this woman. Xiao Yun is really a bit strange why he did it this way. What's going on? Just listen to Han Cheng's words. If I guess correctly, this woman must have an intricate relationship with that person. There are very few people in this world who can reach out so well, and even fewer who happen to be good at understanding and attacking people's hearts. Only she. Even though her appearance has changed significantly and her identity has changed, her temperament has not diminished at all. If he finds out that we are hiding this matter, he may not be able to copy the entire Xiao family enough. One sentence at a time, followed by a shocking secret. Xiao Yun also reacted and her face changed greatly. She turned her head to look at the path where she disappeared, her eyes filled with fear and luck. Later, report to the authorities. Make sure he knows she's in the capital. Make sure to let the emperor know that she has returned. End of this chapter. Chapter 10. Help. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 10 Help Wuming Kingdom. Capital, Xuancheng. Today, this Xuancheng is truly bustling and extraordinary. Since the Prime Minister's blood letter, the Emperor has not taken any further extreme actions. The people in the city moved back one after another, and naturally began to see scenes of transactions with the surname Wan. Chen Xiangxi bit into the crisp Xiaobing, baked cake and griddle, and the crunchy skin of gurgling cracked, and a smell of burnt sesame spread. The outer skin is crispy and covered in sesame seeds, while the inner layer is soft and tender, especially after being coated with a layer of butter, it is even more fresh and fragrant. Just a sip, Chen Xiangxi enjoyed it with a smile on her face. The old man who made pancakes smiled with wrinkles on his face. Girl, looking at your expression, it's your first time eating. Is it delicious? It must have been four years since I last enjoyed such delicious food, right? I didn't expect this old man to survive that peerless battle. Before, she used to crave such delicious food and would always take some leisure time. After changing into casual clothes, she quietly sneaked into the Xian city to buy two, one on her left and one on her right, eating and walking. She walked outside the city gate, patted her paws, and found a place to wash her hands. Then, she mounted a horse and galloped away. Chen Xiangxi licked the sesame on the corner of his mouth, satisfied with a book. It's delicious, it's really delicious. Unfortunately, my body hasn't been eating such food for a long time, so I can't enjoy a few more. The old man also smiled, pointing proudly at the plaque behind him. This is the number one in the sky. Chen Xiangxi was about to answer with a smile, his face stiffened. Wait, he clearly doesn't like this greasy and fishy food. She stared blankly at the plaque, her thoughts surging for a moment. The imperial edict personally written by the emperor must be sent to the palace once a month. It's his handwriting, that's right. Standing tall and sharp, 
proud like a bamboo branch, she is most familiar with a font. How could it be him? Before, he always felt greasy and didn't even want to smell the taste. It was strictly forbidden to have such food in the palace. It wasn't until I saw that she always ate endlessly that I sent someone out of the palace to buy it when she was gone. Why did I suddenly choose such greasy things as palace supplies? The ghost path is the body of gods and demons, which has already broken through the realm of humans and entered the divine realm. Since there is no need to eat food, how could this thing suddenly be mentioned? The person in front of me is just an ordinary person, so I'm not sure. Chen Xiangxi thought for a while, took a piece of Xiaobing, baked cake and griddle, and paid the bill, then said. Sir, may I ask why the brocade shop has been so crowded these days? It's so lively, isn't it a holiday? Are you from another city? It seems like I don't know yet. Your Majesty, there will be a concubine selection soon, and this list will be directly distributed to various counties and regions. The scale is unprecedentedly grand. Do you think it's not festive? Ladies from wealthy families with some strength will come to pull a piece of silk brocade to make a dress for themselves, buy some good rouge to dress themselves up, and of course there are many people on the street. Chen Xiangxi held the cake and his expression froze. Consort Selection Xie'er, when you're tired, come back. The phoenix seat by my side has been vacant, waiting for you. He sat with her on the mountaintop, his arms wrapped around her waist, his face buried on her shoulders, making her itch. She lowered her eyes and looked gloomy. Anyway, he's over twenty-eight years old this year, so it's only natural for him to choose a concubine. She finished the cake in three bites and two bites, patted the crumbs on her palm, wiped her mouth, turned around, and continued forward. My belly is full, it's time to get down to business. She turned around and walked into a shop. Before she could even step in, the owner inside frowned and waved to let her out. Go ahead, what poor girl. If you don't have money at home, don't touch it randomly. Can you afford to pay if it gets dirty? Chen Xiangxi gritted his teeth in anger. You. But in the moment when he wanted to get angry, he honestly closed his mouth and turned around to leave. Forget it, if there are any patrols after the noise, it will be troublesome. She looked down at herself. My outfit looks really shabby she had come in wearing a fox fur jacket, but not far from the city gate in the hallway, she saw a family crying. They were crying uncontrollably because they couldn't afford medicine and their family was on the brink of death. After learning about it, she took off the clothes and asked them to exchange for some money, and casually changed into their coarse cloth clothes. The fox fur jacket is made from the outer skin of an adult white fox over the age of forty in the northern desert. It is a whole piece of fox fur, worth thousands of gold, and can only be enjoyed by wealthy young masters in the capital. Now, let's go it's just that. She stood on the street, looking up. Not far away, the imperial palace was towering, with red bricks and black tiles. The black dragon sculpture at the top was still lifelike, making it the tallest and most magnificent building in the city. The second highest hall is located outside the palace. Golden and dazzling, I dot catching. Chen Xiangxi nodded. That's it there. Wujin League. She had just stepped into the door and only heard one person. Hello, red sleeves. It's the waiter in the store, greeting her. Tang Tang Wujin League, known as the world's first alliance. Just the waiters in the store, with their imposing demeanor and way of dealing with people, are completely different from the waiters in other wealthy households, with extraordinary food, clothing, and expenses. On weekdays, monarchs of all countries should yield to a third of the alliance, which is truly a wealthy country. She walked up to the counter and spoke concisely. I'm looking for your shopkeeper. The waiter is a bit embarrassed. Miss, the host is a big shot and does not receive ordinary guests. Chen Xiangxi turned his head and looked around, examining the internal structure of the room. This should be the main store, right? The waiter immediately said. Yes, yes, this is the number one brand, 
but the owner really doesn't receive the people. This is the rule. If you insist on finding him, it's our servants who are in trouble. If you don't mind, if you don't mind, you can tell me what kind of illness you have in your family and let me help you. If it's just a small person who can't help you, it's not too late to discuss with the owner again. The scene in front of Chen Xiangxi caught the eye, even though it was a familiar and impossible decoration. However, Chen Xiangxi felt a little dazed. I didn't expect that after so long, this decoration hasn't changed yet five years ago, he asked her for a birthday gift, and she didn't even think about it. She casually pointed to a corner of the hall and asked him to open it and make it into a preserved fruit cabinet, so that she could always come and eat refreshing snacks like dried apricots and peaches. Later on, I realized that my request was really excessive. How could we tear down the wooden cabinet, which is the treasure of the shop, to make a preserved fruit cabinet specifically for her? That's the face of the Wujin League. How many levels have the alliance been lowered directly? Unexpectedly, he actually sent someone to dismantle it and actually released her favorite preserved fruit, waiting for her visit. And this release lasted for five years. If I remember correctly, what is placed in that cabinet seems to be a herb passed down from the ancestors of the Wujin League. The medicine that is hard to find in ordinary times, and some small countries even go to war with each other directly in order to get a pair. A seat full of jokes, actually taking it seriously that guy usually looks cynical, but I didn't expect him to be such a serious person. Chen Xiangxi looked inside the hall, while the waiter next to him lowered his head and secretly looked up at her, afraid that she would see him scrutinizing her. However, after a glance, he immediately shifted his gaze. This woman is truly extraordinary. Although she was wearing coarse cloth clothes, she was clean and tidy. Moreover, the way she spoke to me was clearly a commanding and commanding demeanor, without any hint of timidity. She was clearly a woman from a wealthy family. Moreover, if it were an ordinary person, they would have been amazed by the luxurious decoration style inside the hall, unable to say a word for a long time, and their aura would naturally be reduced by half. She came and went freely, even leisurely and contented, probably accustomed to the glory and wealth she had seen before. Isn't it because the former relatives of the alliance leader were in dire straits and came to beg for a few bounties? Among these four seas and eight wastelands, the only luxury level that can compare to this palace is probably only the royal family. The waiter's heart took a turn. Or perhaps. People from the royal family who come to visit privately in their humble attire. Thinking of this, he secretly taught himself not to neglect the distinguished guest. He was about to turn around and report the unexpected guest, but he heard the woman say. If you hand over this painting to your boss, he will come to me voluntarily. She took out a painting and placed it on the table. It's natural not to wear it casually. What if it gets robbed? She drew it down. Although she enjoys dancing with guns and playing with sticks and sneers at elegant things such as painting and tuning the piano, she has also studied in the palace and can draw well, able to see the contours. The waiter looked down for a moment, his face shocked. Chen Xiangxi inferred from his expression that he must know exactly what this thing was, so he hugged his arm and stood on the side waiting for his answer, but his heart was speechless. Undoubtedly, it is the Wujin League. Even the waiter can recognize such a rare thing. I saw the waiter's pupils suddenly shrink, staring at the painting for a long time. How could it be? Ice blood lotus. Isn't that a herb that can only be seen in books? The nemesis of all poisons in the world is just a petal, which can make a person who is dying from poisoning breathe again. But all things are interdependent, and there is a guardian monster near each ice blood lotus. Most of the guardians of the Warcraft are highly venomous snakes. With just a puff of venomous mist, ordinary people can rot and turn into a pool of blood, leaving no bones or debris. Ordinary people should avoid it from afar when they see it, even experts with imprints on their bodies who come out of the Yin Yang path should search together. It is said that for so many years, the only ice blood lotus that has been picked by humans is only one person. That is the current ruler of Wuming Kingdom. 
It is said that it was because a woman he extremely favored was poisoned and on the brink of death. All the pills in Danqing Palace could not cure him. He went deep into the snow valley alone and spent half a month finally picking an ice blood lotus. But who is the ruler of Wuming Kingdom? One person can resist thousands of soldiers. With exceptional abilities, he is simply a demon who kills without blinking an eye. In terms of martial arts, no one in this world is his opponent. The waiter's face changed greatly and he looked up at Qin Xiangxi, unable to speak clearly. This is a rare treasure that can only be encountered but not sought after. I really can't make up my mind. Please stay calm here, Mississippi. Take a sip of tea and rest. I will immediately report to my boss. Chen Xiangxi pointed to the cabinet. No problem, I'm not in a hurry. Why don't you let me taste this dried fruit? If the medicine prescribed is bitter, it is the rule of Wujin League to pack a few packets of preserved fruits and candied fruits to prevent dry vomiting after medication. Because they are meticulous in their work, their preserves can be called a delicious delicacy on earth. She fell in love with this taste after taking a few sips of medicine back then. The waiter is in a hurry. No, no, our boss has orders. The dried fruits, candies, and other items in this cabinet must not be touched. No one is allowed to touch them. It's like that thing is a ban. Chen Xiangxi looked at the cabinet. Can't touch it. Forget it, this demon's personality is crazy. He always comes up with ideas and sometimes goes crazy. Even a tattered handkerchief can be kept as a treasure. Watching people occasionally enter the store, Chen Xiangxi turned around and left. With a shabby appearance on his body, afraid that sitting for too long would only attract gossip. Looking for a tea room, Chen Xiangxi casually found a seat to sit in, ordered a pot of top dot grade rain Queen Longjing, and tasted it carefully. Anyway, I left a note when I left, so I'm not afraid the waiter won't be able to find it. There was a commotion outside the window, and she followed along to see a nearby open arena where two young men were competing in martial arts. It should be an annual arena competition. Wuming Kingdom is naturally proud of its high cultivation and reverence for power. Throughout history, major families have devoted all their power to the cultivation of their descendants, to ensure that they can have extremely strong cultivation. A family can have a highly cultivated family leader, which naturally adds a lot of face to the family. How to determine the strength of the abilities of two young masters from different families? It is not easy to compete on weekdays, so it is placed on such occasions. A competition organized by various families who have invested in it. Therefore, these scenes are scenes where major families compete to stand out. All the younger generations are naturally eager to try and use all their means to win. At just one glance, Chen Xiangxi became interested. Her favorite was this kind of competition. Just as she was about to get up and run up to the stage to play, her body suddenly stiffened, and then she lowered her eyes. Yes, now she is no longer the same as before. I can no longer be as reckless as before. Just as she was thinking about it, a thin mist formed in her eyes, and then as she sat down again, a burst of cheers erupted from the scene. She couldn't help but turn her head to look. But at the first glance, the pupils suddenly contracted. I saw the young man standing on the arena, defeating the person who had just defeated all the challengers and was about to take the top bounty from the arena. He was defeated by a young man who had just stepped on stage and fell to the ground. For some reason, she felt that the young man who had just won looked a bit familiar, took a few more glances, and then stopped breathing. That child's appearance is really beautiful. Her skin was white and pure, dressed in a plain white robe, graceful and graceful, like a white crane. At that moment, Chen Xiangxi unexpectedly saw the shadow of a person from him. A character who is also dressed in plain white clothes, pure and white, looking warm and warm like a spring breeze. That name, she blurted it out. Ling Jun. With just one sound, Chen Xiangxi's eyes turned red. 
Someone she would never see again in her lifetime related to that person, Chen Xiangxi couldn't help but take a few more glances and saw that the young man had defeated the last few people who came on stage to challenge him, which made his face even more shocked. His skills and moves are extremely similar to him. After finishing a pot of tea in the future, Chen Xiangxi immediately got up and rushed out of the window, following the direction of the young man's departure. With just a few strokes, he caught up with the young man. I saw him holding a long sword and walking alone on the road without any followers. Chen Xiangxi spoke up. Stop. The white figure in front stopped and turned slightly to her side, turning its head to look at her. Chen Xiangxi quickly ran up to him and asked, Who is your father? As soon as she finished speaking, a voice came from behind her. Clear and cold, like rain falling on a clear day. It's me, how about it? He turned around and saw a slender black figure standing behind him. It's the same as the figure I saw on the day of Xu Yuan. Chen Xiangxi was frightened and his brain went blank. I saw him wearing a pure black robe, with several golden stripes on the cuffs, exuding a faint golden glow. Even the best shop in Beijing would need hundreds of skilled female workers to make this fabric for a month. There is really no price in the market. How many people can afford to wear such clothes, besides the extremely prosperous wealthy family like Wu Jin League? Chen Xiangxi couldn't help but take a few steps back and looked up at him. His eyes were cold, like beasts. The aura on the body is also extremely powerful, making people feel a bit suffocated. Even though she used to command countless armies and horses, she couldn't help but feel a slight chill. But he is really good. Looking, the skin is pale. The facial features are deep and stunning, with an extremely pathological beauty. Chen Xiangxi couldn't help but frown. She has become familiar with those people in the capital. How could such a beautiful person appear out of thin air? Who are you? He didn't answer and asked instead. Are you looking for him? What's up? Chen Xiangxi did not want to be enemies with someone who was extremely deep in the city but couldn't see through him, but was eager to know the answer, so he spoke up. I have something to ask. I thought he would step aside for her to ask, but I only heard him still standing there and asking. What's up? Such verbosity actually made Chen Xiangxi angry. She pinched her waist and looked him up and down feeling extremely angry. What's going on? I'll ask him a question, what's bothering you? What's your business? Why are you talking so much? He surprisingly had a faint daze on his face at that moment. This unreasonable demeanor is very much like the person who used to be. I like to be reckless in front of him the most, relying on his softness and unwillingness to talk about her, causing trouble and pestering. For a moment, a hint of warmth flashed in his eyes, and as he looked at the sharpness in her eyes, there was no such expression. But how could it be her? The appearance is completely different. The temperament is somewhat similar, but his eyes darkened and he just said. Speak up directly if you have something to say. When the words reached his lips, they rolled a few more times before Chen Xiangxi spoke cautiously. Do you recognize the previous head of the Danqing Palace, Yelf Shenyun? But seeing the person still blocking in front of the young man, he asked. What's going on? Chen Xiangxi frowned, full of impatience. Why don't you mind your business? I'll ask him directly, will he lose a piece of meat or something? She deliberately shifted the topic without answering. Of course, she couldn't answer. She told him that this young man's moves were very similar to Yelv Xianyun, and if he had ulterior motives, it would be troublesome. No one has ever dared to be so reckless in front of him except for her. Besides, he also knows that person he stared at her, his eyes filled with a hint of awe. Do you know Yelv Xianyun? The sudden sense of oppression made Chen Xiangxi tremble uncontrollably, and his aura was not as arrogant as before. She watched him take two steps back. You, you. Speaking, cold sweat had spread throughout the body. The remaining words were already choked in his throat, and Chen Xiangxi stared at him blankly, his mind blank for a moment. 
He why is it so frustrating fear spreads from the bone marrow like a worm. Chen Xiangxi stood still in place. Very cold in this world, almost no one would make her feel like this suddenly, a sentence shattered the momentary silence, and in an instant, Chen Xiangxi felt like she had regained her breathing. Red sleeves, you are indeed here. It was the waiter who was sweating profusely just now, probably unable to find her at the tea house, so he rushed over. He ran up to her, looked at him, then at her, and then asked. Do you have anything to do now? The leader wants to see you now. Chen Xiangxi looked at him and then at the shop assistant. I must have thought she came to see her old friend this is a good opportunity, how can we go? Chen Xiangxi turned his head and said, goodbye, then followed the waiter and ran, as if there was a wolf behind him. The person didn't answer, still standing in place, watching her departing figure. A pair of blood eyes were dark and dark, unable to show any emotions. The boy standing behind him, also watching the path she left, didn't answer. Finally, footsteps could be heard at the end of the alley, followed by the sound of kneeling on the ground. Your Majesty. Urgently report. He turned around and looked at the person kneeling on the ground, his newly aroused anger still lingering, and his voice visibly tinged with anger. What needs to be reported directly? The person trembled with fear and said, it's the Xiao family who reportedly saw a person very similar to the wanted criminal enter the capital. The wind attendant nodded and immediately understood the meaning of these words. There is only one wanted criminal. It's her. He turned around and looked towards the end of the path where she had disappeared. A cold smile appeared at the corner of my mouth. Okay, that's great just thinking about it, my heart was already filled with killing intent. End of this chapter